All right, let's start off on number uh, two here. So for this one, we're going to solve this with any method. I would always try factoring first. So we're going to do A times C up top and B on bottom. Actually, but B is five. And so I'm going to think of two numbers that multiply to the top and add to the bottom. Now, in this case, that's actually not possible. There's no numbers. I mean, with five, we can only do five and one. And there's no way I can mess around with the negatives there to make that add up to five. So I'm going to switch then to quadratic formula. So we got x equals uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Uh, and so uh, we got a, b, and c here. They're the numbers in front. So b would be 5. So I'm going to put negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 5 all over 2 times 1. Uh, and so we'll just simplify this. So... Uh, 5 squared is 25, and then over here I have uh, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, times negative 5 is plus 20, and all over 2. And so now I will do that addition in there, um, so that'll be 45 all over 2. And I do want to break down this 45, 9 and 5, which is 3 and 3, so I have twin 3s that can go outside. Loner 5 has to stay inside, so then I have negative 5 plus or minus... Uh, 3 radical 5 all over 2. Now we want to check and see if we can uh, reduce these 3 right there, but um, there's no number that all those all divide by, so that's just not possible in this case, so I'm done. All right, next up, number 4. So I first want to get one side to 0, uh, so I'm going to move everything over here. I always like to move it to whatever side would keep my squared positive. So if I uh, move this over here, I'm going to get a positive 3x squared. And then plus 7x minus 6 equals 0. Oh, not 6x, just uh, minus 6 equals 0. Um, so that makes it easier at first. And then I'm going to try factoring here. a times c would be negative 18, and then b would be 7. So uh, that's going to be positive 9 and negative 2 would multiply to negative 18 and add to, to positive 7. However, I do need to use my grouping here because I have the 3x squared out front. So I'm going to say plus 9x minus 2x minus 6. Uh, so remember that the middle two here, how we split this up, uh, is just based on these two numbers right there. Um, I can put them in whatever order and uh, just put them with an X so that it represents this one right there. So now I'm going to do my grouping. So I'm going to group these and group these. So the first group I can take out 3X, leaving me with X plus 3. And the second group I can take out negative 2, which also leaves me with X plus 3. And so then uh, I get one parentheses for the outside stuff, 3X minus 2. And one parentheses for the inside stuff, x plus 3. So now we're going to split this up, set these uh, equal to 0 individually, and solve. And so on this one, I'm going to add 2. 3x equals 2. Uh, and then divide by 3. So x equals 2 over 3. And then uh, this one, I will just subtract the 3. And then x equals negative 3. All right, next up here, they want us to find the discriminant. So the discriminant is just b squared minus 4ac. And that'll tell me how many solutions we have. If that is a positive, then that means two real solutions. And if it's zero, that actually means it's one real solution. And if it's a negative, then that means uh, no real solutions or two imaginary solutions. All right, so on this one, we'll do uh, 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3. So that'll be 16 minus, that'll be uh, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. So that comes out to 4. Um, so the discriminant is 4, and that means since it's positive, we get two real solutions. All right, next up, we're going to solve this by taking square roots. So first, I want to isolate the squared. So in this case, I'm going to divide the 5 since it's multiplying. If, uh, if it was adding, I would subtract it. If it was subtracting, I would add it. Uh, 225 divided by 5, I don't know that off the top of my head, so I'll just do some uh, long division here. So that's 45, so r squared equals 45. And then I'll take a square root on both sides, so r equals plus or minus. And I'll break this down, 9 and 5, 3 and 3. Uh, so I get 3 radical 5. All right, next up here, we're going to solve this system algebraically, so I'm going to need to use substitution. So I'm going to swap that out right there since we have an isolated variable. So I'm going to say 3x plus 1 equals x squared plus 4x minus 1. And then I'm going to move everything to one side. I'm going to get one side to 0 so I can factor. So I get 0 equals x squared plus x uh, minus 2. 
And now we'll think of two numbers and multiply to negative 2 and add to 1. So that would be positive 2 and negative 1. I don't need the grouping here. I can do the shortcut just x plus 2x minus 1 since I don't have a number in front of the x squared. So I need to split this up now. So x plus 2 equals 0. So x equals negative 2 if I subtract that over. x minus 1 equals 0 means that x equals 1. However, I do need y values here, so I'm going to plug them back into this original equation. I could use either one, but that one just looks easier. So I'm just going to plug them in one at a time. So the first up, I'm going to plug in negative 2. So 3 times negative 2 plus 1. So that's negative 6 plus 1, and that is uh, negative 5. So that means my point here is negative 2 comma negative 5. Since I plugged in negative 2 for x, I got out negative 5 for y. And now I'll plug in 1 there, so y equals 3 times 1 plus 1, so 3 plus 1, obviously 4, and so that's uh, 1 comma 4. All right, next up here we're going to uh, write an equation for the function that models the data. We're going to have three options really here. We have linear, which is always going to be in the form y equals mx plus b. Uh, and then we have quadratic, which will always, in these questions, be y equals ax squared. And then exponential will be in the form y equals a times b to the x. So um, on this first one here, first of all, we need to decide which one it is. So I always check the, uh, the differences here. So how do I get from one y value to the next? So this is minus 9, and then that's minus 3, and then this is plus 3, and then that's plus 9. So if those are all the same then that's going to be linear. Now, in this case, it is not linear um, because those are different. And so I would go on and check the next level here. And so this would be a plus 6 pattern, and that's plus 6, and that's a plus 6 pattern. And so since these are the same, I can say it's quadratic. So it's going to fall under this one. Um, so I'm going to say y equals uh, ax squared. I have to figure out what a is by grabbing any point other than 0, 0. So I'm going to use 1, 3. I need to just plug that in, y for y and x for x. And so I get uh, a times 1 equals 3. And so a obviously equals 3. So I'm just going to say y equals 3x squared. All right, I'm just going to continue here with uh, number 2. So for this one, I'm going to check the pattern again. And I get a uh, plus 3 and then plus 3 and then plus 3 and then plus 3. So I do get that consistent uh, adding there. And so I'm going to say that this is linear. Um, so I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. Now I actually know that m is 3 because that's that number that keeps adding there. And then uh, the y-intercept is always the, it's always 0 comma b. So whatever the y value is when x is 0. So in this case it's 0 comma 1. So I'm just going to say y equals 3x plus 1 to put in that mx plus b. All right, lastly here, uh, number 3. So here I have a minus 16 pattern, minus 8, minus 4, minus 2, and minus 1. So that's obviously not linear. Um, and so uh, we'll uh, go to the next level with this. So plus 8, plus 4, plus 2, plus 1. Um, so then it's not quadratic either because those numbers aren't the same either. So now I need to uh, try and see if it's exponential. It probably is. So for exponential, um, it's going to be in y equals ab to the x. Um, I always know a is, again, the uh, just kind of like uh, the y-intercept. Uh, so it's 0, comma a. So I see a right there is 4. It's the y value when x is 0. And then for b, I need to divide. It's really what we call r, the ratio. Any y value divided by the, number, the y value in front of it. So I would use these two, so 1 over 2. Um, you can see them dividing those backwards. We could also do it as 2 over 4. And we could also do that as 4 over 8. We can keep going. You can see that all of these are really equal to 1 half. So I'm just going to say y equals 4 times 1 half to the power of x. All right, so now uh, the last three here I'll have you guys try on your own. All of them are kind of like a similar one from the top three.